Hi. Welcome to Copacanon and welcome to your pick a card energy for the week. First of all, thank you to everybody who was patient with me and letting me heal. Um, there's a lot of stuff that came up this week and I might have uh, la, la, la. <laughs> I might have some more things in the works very soon, so stay tuned for that. And without much more ado, we are going on a deep dive, so we are using the El Goliath Tarot. So I'm going to show you your cards. Number one, we have the Exorcism, the Shedding Snake. Number two, we have the Death Card. Very beautiful. The Metamorphic Moth. Number three, we have the tower, the burning tree. Number four, we have judgment. And the transcendence. Okay, I'm going to pause here and I will see you in your timestamps. All right. Pile one, if you picked the exorcism. I'll pause for a second. Oh no, it went back to normal. Okay, good. Um, the shedding snake. Then this is your reading. So I'm guessing from your reading, I pulled more than one El Goliath tarot card because first of all, it's sort of still a new deck for me. I don't use it as often as some of my other decks. And so it's sticky. And so everybody got more than a few cards but I think it paints a story really well that some of you have been going through obviously with the exorcism purging um, not only just a transformation because when we see that snakeskin we think okay they're renewing it's a rebirth but purging as well um, whatever that old skin was and maybe that old skin was rather tight um, and kept you confined. The cards that I have underneath here, it really feels like this is spirit driven and to kind of light up things that maybe might not have been lit before. Because you have the High Priestess, and she has her bat wings. <laughs> Makes me kind of think of Catwoman. And the Council of Monarchs which represents all four seasons. But in this deck, this is the emperor. And so the high priestess is very yin, and the emperor is very masculine. And the Council of Monarchs is more concerned with the truth, what the finding the actual truth of something. And I think we're concerned that truth is within us. It's not something external. Um, because you have a lot of, yeah, you have a, you have a lot of um, internal stuff that has been going on. It looks like, and I think it's to bring this to the forefront. Your high priestess, your inner high priestess, whether you're a male or female, you have abilities, and some of you might be Cancer moons, Cancer ascendants, or Cancerians, just because you have a lot of the moon here. Um, and there's something about those cycles of the moon where something slowly, gradually lights up for you and then becomes much more clear, okay? Your reading is different. There's different parts. There's different things going on. There's not just one thing going on. Because the second card that you got was the moon. And it's a full moon, which we just had a full moon. So I kind of think of this as present. And the full moon was in Capricorn. So, a very nice feeling, actually. Sometimes full moons can feel really uncomfortable. There are signs that can feel actually smooth and grounding. Okay? Um, the moon, the silver shadow reflector. And with the moon, I pulled the Knight of Air. 
And here she's, I think she's doing like, this is a hawk. So if any of you feel that that is your spirit guide, that's coming up. But also, I kind of feel like she works, you know, like falconry, like she's working with this animal. Where they send messages back and forth. And underneath that is the four of fire. There's a bit about family. And maybe in the upcoming months or weeks, you may either be staying with family or family might be staying with you. That came up right away when this other card comes up and I'll show you. But there might be something that you're sort of wrestling with in the meantime. The four of fire in this, which is right under the night of air, you know, messages coming in rather quickly, right? And I feel like messages are coming back and forth here. The Four of Fire kind of speaks about unwrapping things, really. Unwrapping different opportunities, because it looks like that's what they're doing. But I want to show you, too, that there's volcanoes here. And so something about this venture, something about the information that's coming in right away might be unsettling or it might be um, unexpected. Even though it might turn out to be really nice because this is someone who is being reborn and we have that here, right? A rebirth of some kind. I'm almost getting like a like a giddy feeling about this card. Like when this comes out, it might make you feel kind of like, woo. And I don't know that it necessarily has to do with the rest of your reading. That's the other interesting part is these two seem to, okay, there's messages that come in and they come in sort of unexpectedly, but they bring a good thing with them. And that had to do with that full moon, something being birthed something coming to fruition in the full moon so your reading i think is very much in time with what's going on right now the next card is the six of cups and that's where i see you visiting family or a family coming to visit you perhaps and it looks like maybe quite a few people okay could be a reunion you could be getting together it is summer lots of people are planning get togethers with their family and some of these people, I think, live differently than you do. Or your own family does. Or your, you and your significant other. And there might be, you know, it might be a, little, a bit of ruffling feathers. Because it seems like these birds have decided to camp out on the, on the heads of these hippos. And maybe they're not so sure about that, right? They're like, oh, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> um... The sixes are balanced, so there's something about this maybe that is going to balance things out. Underneath that, you have some really nice things going on. Um, first, we have Ace of Air. We have Knight of Air before that, and then we have Ace of Air. So there might have been messages coming in. It might have had to do with your family because the Four, the four of Fire is a celebration, and that might have been an unexpected event where you didn't expect um, to meet up with all the family members that you did. But there's something still, I want to remind you about this, there's, there's something birthing here. And these are unexpected. The volcanoes, you, you know, we, we don't really know when volcanoes are going to erupt. I mean, not especially. There might be some other seismic stuff that tell us, but that what comes through there is the ace of air. And I want to say, once again, um, we've had this before where dragons have come through, and I think some of you work with dragons because that's a pretty prominent thing. <laughs> or maybe dragons would like to work with you. All right. But here's... Yeah. There's something about your own power. And it may be when you're surrounded um, with people amongst your family, if there's some sort of get-together or reunion with them, or they come to you or you go to them. I really see that. But it accentuate something about your own power because she's obviously kind of conducting something she's conducting the air my son when he was little used to um do all this he used to conduct the air when there was a uh when there was a 
a big thunderstorm and we lived in a place where there were a lot there was lots of lightning so sometimes I would be like woo stop that's close enough but I want to bring your attention to to these these are very white white flowers and she's very very white and the red is right underneath her so something um, some spiritual ability that's driven by your passion okay some kind of clarification about that something's going to become very clear and I really believe it happens when you're amongst others look at how joyful this this is the ten of cups okay ten of cups is very beautiful in this right normally we see you know the two people and they're um, celebrating their love on a you know it's not the three of cups where we're taking our love to town this is the ten of cups and we've become that okay so that may solidify a relationship in your life at that time when you're amongst others or it may be okay that you feel very solidly enwrapped in that family and maybe perhaps um there's a bit of you know underneath that i think shadow stuff that comes up that sometimes makes us feel uncomfortable somehow we're going to make peace with that and possibly because of this ace okay something will become very clear and I just want to say, like, this is one of the most beautiful Ace of Air. Did I say Ace of Cups before this? I just want to apologize. I do that when I get channeling, and sometimes I'm like, blah, blah. But there's, there's something of, I think when you're amongst the family, if you are not with someone currently, there's going to be a yearning to be with someone. And for some of you, there's someone that you definitely have in mind and you'd like to hear from them. Because in the atmosphere, we have the Two of Cups. Okay? I think you're definitely thinking about that. If you don't have someone in mind, you're making someone up in your head about what that would be, okay? There's a lot of daydreaming going on about who that person might be, what they might look like, what you would like them to have as far as traits, qualities, those kinds of things. Can, you know how you, you will plan little conversations in your head? about what you would say if so-and-so and you were out picking blah 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 and you know that kind of thing you're making little ideas of of how things would go and for those of you that have someone in mind i think you very much would like to hear from them because we have the ace or we have the eight of fire which is movement right that's communication coming in and i think this communication i want to take a card on this on the Knight of Air and the Four of Air, just to see where we're at. Can I get a clarifier? Mm -hmm. Okay, that goes over there though, right? Yeah. Something is definitely shifting, okay? And you might feel it this month, next month. Can I get, wow. Hmm. There, and communication's increasing. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be, if you have someone in mind with two of cups, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be them. But communication in general. I think I got three clarifiers. So for our high priestess and um, council of monarchs, right? I have four of cups. Or four of, I keep wanting to say cups, guys. Are you just all about love right now? <laughs> You were like, where are the cups? I want the cups. Um, you do have the ten, which is nice. It may not be the, you know, it might not be the, whoo, romantic, passionate love, but it is, there's other things coming together for you in the meantime, okay? So we have the, the four of swords. So I think you spent a lot of time kind of like shelving yourself to a little place where you could curl up in your nest and heal your heart. Okay, and that was part of this period, right? But then you, your next two things that come up, once again, Eight of Wands with Wheel of Fortune. So movement, movement in a good way. Communication coming through, and it's shifting the energy. Wheel of Fortune means opportunities are coming, okay? The other thing that I pulled for the atmosphere, because I saw this sort of as a wish, some of you have a wish that this person, you're, you know, like, could I please have that significant other right now? Or 
with that person that I have my eye on, please reach out and communicate with me. And this is the card that I pulled, which is Queen of Earth. I think, first of all, that if you feel like I want them to communicate, if this is an actual person that you know or know of, maybe haven't met yet, that you do communicate. If you do look at these two cards, there's purple here and there's purple here, and it kind of talks to me about crown chakra communication back and forth, maybe dreams with each other, okay? And that may be where it's at right now, okay? That... The Queen of Earth is also someone who knows their own worth, very practically minded, is involved in the day-to-day -day things that are going on. And that spirit's message is that whatever is coming through, okay, because you can see this is lit, whatever messages are coming through, you kind of take them in, okay? And we, and we are moving. I want to get one more card for the last Ten of Water. An Ace of Earth for you. One more, please. One more. Well, boy, you've got a lot of repeating cards, ladies and gentlemen. Um, are you readers? Because you had the Eight twice, you had the Eight of Fire twice, and you also had the Ace Okay, of Air twice. These kind of go well together. There's something you're working on, okay, besides besides a love relationship or besides working on that right now. You're working on a, accumulating other gifts. That's the sense I get. And I think it happens mo when you're amongst others. This isn't your family, like family reunion. Or this could be a gathering of friends. This could be people coming to see you from other places. I really do see a lot of you getting visitors and maybe unexpected visitors, but it's going to be joyful, okay? If not, like, you know, oh my gosh, they put their stuff everywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, any other messages? Let's get you one more oracle card, okay, guys? just feel like I've been absent. I need to just give out the love for everyone. Uh -huh. Yeah. Something about things that you are trying to manifest or people that you are trying to manifest... The universe is asking you to surrender that wish. And also surrender something else as far as spiritual gifts coming in. This really makes me think that you're going to wake up to something and it's going to be very beautiful. That you're like, oh, I. And there's some sort of surrender that goes along with that. Because when we try too much to, um, you know, it, run the, um, you know, put in our, like, I would like this here, and I want to work on that next, and sometimes we don't get that choice, so there's a bit of surrendering, okay? All right, that was your reading. I hope you loved it. It was kind of quick, but you know what? It was very to the point, and wow. Let me know in the comments if you can. If you can't, I respect your privacy, and if you'd like to um, subscribe, you're more than welcome to. If you are subscribed, Thank you for being here. And I did notice that we have new subscribers, so welcome if that's you. And if you'd like to work with me, there's information in the link tree below. I should be one of those car salesmen. Mwah. Love you. Bye-bye. Hi. Welcome to... Oops. For some reason, this is not working. Hold on. Hi. Okay. For some reason, my microphone is kind of cutting in and out. I will try to keep an eye on it. Um, so if you pick pile number two with the metamorphic moth and death, this is your reading. First of all, I just want to say what a beautiful card. Um, and with this, I really get symmetry, first of all. There's a lot of symmetry in this card. Everything looks very balanced. And I think that's something with this rebirth or metamorphic moth feeling that we went from be maybe being unbalanced. Um, and I think for some of you it had to do with expectations of other people, um, of how we interact with other people. 
And some of this, this was orchestrated outside of us, but it, we brought it in and we did the work, okay? So some of us might have had something come in that really felt like, oh my God, why did that happen? Or really, really painful at the time. But we didn't, um, we didn't eschew that and say, well, that's not mine to look at or that's somebody else's problem. We, we looked at it and thought, okay, I'm going to work on this. Um, there's something very mesmerizing, too, about these colors and these little eyes of the moth. They look like little eyes looking back at you. For some of you, there's something about this Knight of Swords, okay, coming in, which I really believe something came in very in a very painful way. And kind of in a startling way. Even though this is a kind of nicely drawn page of swords, I really feel like we may have been thinking very highly of someone or putting them on a pedestal or um, not seeing everything about them. Because we have the Seven of Cups. And we have the rabbit at night. And they're kind of making their dreams up with those cups in the air. And sometimes we can, especially if someone seems very exciting, very interesting, they are doing a lot of things that we don't know how to do, we can put them up on a pedestal or think of them in ways that don't show their true self to us. Like we don't want it, we're not necessarily concerned with that at that time. And it might have been very pleasant. This card looks very pleasant. If we had um, illusions about someone, it might have been very pleasant staying there. So this card coming in with the swords, the knight of swords, is that truth coming in, okay? And it kind of takes away any illusions we may have had. This may have been someone else talking about someone else that we had had ideas about, or maybe illusions that we had had about ourselves. But with the death card, I just want to say congratulations because you weren't faced by that, right? This really speaks, this is not a small card, and especially from this deck. This is taking in ideas or, or maybe even for some of you, giving a lot of credit to other people where it wasn't necessarily due. Um, I'm guilty of that. I When I think people are you know, like, oh my gosh, amazing, amazing, amazing. And then you're like, oh, well they, you know, there, this, 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 and it just keeps going, right? When we kind of get overwhelmed by someone else's uh, persona or even a little, maybe a little obsessed about like, wow, they're amazing, how do they do it? And we can't figure it out. But we've taken that, we've kind of cut that, okay? Because the next thing you have is the Ace of Swords. So we cleared out Whatever ideas we had about someone, okay, that might have been illusionary, even if it was about ourselves, you've done a lot of work to make things clear, okay? And the Ace of Swords really rivals a right here. It, it really has caused this death card with the Ace of Swords, okay? talks about you coming to a full stop somewhere, starting something new, new way of thinking about things. And we had this recently, but underneath that I have the Four of Pentacles with the Eight of Cups. And we have a fox who's very, you know, there's lots of foxes can you know, get under fences, show up in places we don't expect them. I always feel like they're lucky. But this fox is tending to things underground, okay? And not not willing to go out into this night and seek their fortune. And with the Eight of Cups, we have a tiger, okay? Who hunts at night, who's very in touch with their own intuitive self and is a very good hunter. So whatever we were holding tight to our chest, 
we're letting that go. And I think that's a painful process. If this is someone that you had um, dreams about, or felt very close to, or felt like this is someone in my soul tribe, or um, those illusions are moving on. Okay? And we're letting them go. And with the Eight of Cups, it's not an easy letting go because you still have a lot of emotion about that. But this is definitely shifting gears. The Four and the Eight, it's sort of like this doubled, right? And with the Four, and we we often feel with the four of pentacles that he's holding on to his pentacles he's not willing to go out and you know spend money to get money that kind of thing but i really feel this more about with your it may have been with your thoughts or with the way you know like where before that we didn't really feel comfortable in certain situations um and we may have looked to others and how they handled things. I really feel like you're going to look to yourself in the future and handle them on your own. Okay? Because the tiger is a symbol of someone that is solo, they hunt on their own, and they're successful at it. They don't have qualms about being on their own. Next card, which is really interesting this page of wands and we see a bird that is looks huge with the way that they've painted this okay and it's the moonscaped messenger hmm with this card also I just want to bring this up because we have a snake I'm kind of thinking of whatever this truth, this new way of thinking about ourselves, about people that are around us, I really feel like it's going to be very healing. And with this we have Page of Wands. There may be someone that comes in, you know, with some kind of exciting offer. I'm going to take a card on that for you. Because with that we have the Ten. Of pentacles. So we went from the four of pentacles in the middle here, and once we're able to leave things behind, we have the ability to to get to the ten of pentacles, which is solid growth, legacy, being able to lay down roots. Yeah. Okay. So there's more about discernment. Mm hmm so there might be an offer coming up hmm what else yeah okay so this guy really kind of spoke to me of someone coming in and the way that he's looking he looks sort of um, haughty and I you know with the page of wands that always is a you know, it's a moonscape messenger is someone who's really still in the shadows, right? And so to clarify, I have the Seven of Cups again. So I think in the future there might be an offer. And we need to look at that very clearly because we learned here to let go of those illusions, right? And I think in the future there might be something coming up with this. We have the King of Swords. So look at that offer carefully, okay? Because we've been there before. And Spirit is saying, because we have the Queen of Wands, belief in self will get you through that, okay? And there is something to be, to be gathered here that is good, but I think what Spirit is saying is make sure that you don't give away things. Make sure that if someone offers you a job that you aren't doing a whole bunch of stuff just for them okay that you actually are thinking about your future about your ten of pentacles what you would like okay because there may be an offer but we don't want to we don't want to give somebody um, I mean 
especially if they're uh, very knowledgeable and they're very forthright, we don't want to be intimidated and give, give things to them without thinking about what our needs are. Okay, however that is, because it could, could, this could speak of some sort of love relationship for some of you. For most of you, I really feel like it's more about how, how we earn our money and what may be coming in for us and how we view opportunities in the future, because we also have the two of swords. So somebody else's truth and your truth, okay? And the thing about amphibians as well, because we have a frog, is they're not only... They have two different life cycles. They have the tadpole cycle, and then they become a full frog. And when they're in the tadpole stage, they're just in, you know, they're just in the pond. They're not outside of the pond. But I think because we have a full frog here, right? We've gotten... I don't mean to call you a tadpole, but <laughs> we've gotten to the point where we can discern our opportunities with other people, right? And see which ones are actually for us and which, are, you know, what we should be asking for. Um, I am so, I used to not be good at that at all. I used to be like, yep, I'm your person. All right, whatever. Yeah, those hours, great. That pay, okay. And you learn after a while, like, no, I could have asked for more. I could have required them to give me these things. So if it is something like that, put your best foot forward because you deserve it. You deserve to have your needs met, okay? If this is work or if this is relationship, you deserve to have your needs met. And you deserve to have your Ten of Pentacles. And if there's some idea, this is the atmosphere cards that I pulled. And you have a very, very beautiful capybara, okay? And that kind of means to me that you do have people around you that are friendly, that are fun-loving, that, I mean, my goodness, they look really fun-loving. And there's very beautiful pink flowers here. Yeah, I think those are like what we would call in the south a tulip tree. And there is a frog here. He's on the cup. You can't really see him. But there's friendly people around here, and there's also a bird that's on his back. So I feel like there's people that could give you, that could give you advice around you that are that are well uh, that are trustworthy and good friends but next that we have the seven of swords okay so here we have a tiger right who's leaving something that he very much loved behind or you know it may be th way the way that you thought about someone okay that's the sense that i get that we're kind of uh, we're moving our emotions away from that and then here we have the jaguar, and the jaguar defends his territory against these other, looks like tigers in the background. Yeah. Yeah. So there's people around you, I think, that are very trustworthy and helpful, but these people may not be. So make sure that when you need to be, you're in this role, okay, where you are able to defend your corner. All right. I want to get you one more. One more. But congratulations on going through an enormous change, okay? This is not this is not a small thing. And for some of you I think it got brought to light in a way that wasn't very pleasant, okay? That you got information. Yeah. So you definitely have healed shadow self, right? And there's something of like when we think about people when we're little, let's think about, you know, crushes that you had on people when you were little or when you liked guys in a band when you were little and you had ideas of how that was going to work out for you. You ever had that where you're like, oh, yeah, it's totally going to happen. Um, <laughs> and that's not a bad idea to be open and not have limits, right? Because that's something that we lose when we're adults. But we also want the ability to discern freedom. And I think this is going to be freedom from the ideas uh, because this is mostly about thoughts, how we think of others, how we think of ourselves, what our discerning um, position should be, and the belief in ourselves. And I think that's going to give you the freedom that you want. Lindsay, any more? Would you like to give me any more? Oh, nice. Yeah, for some of you, this really is about finding that other person. 
because we have union. Look at all the energy she has around her. Look at all the different colors. That's being in alignment. So for some of you, it really is. Let me see if I can get you another card. Mm -hmm. Can I have more clarifiers on the Ten of Pentacles, please? Ten of Pentacles. Clarify on the Ten of Pentacles. Clarify on the Ten of Pentacles. Ooh, yes. Okay, so if this is not your person coming in, or a job, okay, if that comes in and you feel like, I'm going to wait for something better, go ahead. Because you have the King of Wands. Okay, so I just want to show you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We had the King and the Queen of Wands. Okay? We have both. So that is a true couple. If that's a workmate, that's someone that you can rely on. And they have as much belief in themselves as you have in you. Okay? And if this is a work thing, that's that's something where you're going to work together without any issues. Okay? It's going to feel really comfortable. And you'll make a very good union. All right. Thank you, pile number two. I love doing your reading. You have such beautiful cards. All right. Um, if you are subscribed, thank you for being here. If you'd like to subscribe, you can. And if you just subscribed, I want to say welcome to you. And if you'd like to work with me, there's information in the link tree below. All right. Mwah. Love you. Bye-bye. Hi. Welcome to... Okay, well, I'm having a few issues with the microphone, so I'm going to try to speak up. Oh, man. <laughs> if you pick pile number three, this is your card, the tower. Um, hmm. I guess I'm not going to get anywhere with that. Darn it. I really apologize for any sound issues. I'm going to take this out not connecting um so the tower the tower is first of all oh you know what maybe we'll try this one more time maybe if we plug it in while we're talking maybe that'll help hmm? it could sorry i know it's just so much better with the sound on hmm. yeah <laughs> So the tower in this particular deck is, um, I really see this as something that affected not only you, but other people. And there was an issue of something breaking apart, possibly in a family structure, because we have a tree, and I think about a family tree. And I think this caused a lot of distress, and for some of you, a lot of stomach distress, okay? Um... And it may have had to do with how your family, other families interacted together, like your immediate family, your children and your wife and you, or um, your husband and, or you and your significant other and your mother and grandmother, something to that extent. But I think that tower, of course, when we get the tower, we don't think about it as, you know, oh, that's pleasant. Or, oh, I really needed that a lot of times, especially if it was a really upsetting thing. And I think for a lot of you, it might have been very upsetting. Um, and something definitely, with this, I think there's there's loss. Either of, a, of how you related before to people amongst you or a loss of some kind. But it, if we look at this card, it, if we look at underneath, I asked for clarifiers. So we actually got three of these um, El Goliath tarots. And you're the first one who got three, and then I decided that other people should get three. <laughs> but you're the first one that got three of them because they came out together. But underneath this is the Eight of Swords. And we see someone, if we look at this, it looks like she's tied pretty well, right? We can't even see her arms. She looks like maybe she doesn't have arms. If we look in the back, though, we can see that those are quite loose. And we see that there's an eagle coming in. So birds may 
be something that you're seeing a lot of or that you saw a lot of when this was going on. In, in fact, if you're out and you're driving and some, you know, bird of prey or some other bird swoops in front of you, that, you know, think about what you were thinking right then because it's, it's definitely you have spirit guides that are talking to you. Underneath that, we have justice. So we have two blindfolded people, okay? So I think that there has been a, a, a sense of justice that needed to be served about a situation. And it may have uh, just kind of went up in flames in some ways, this situation, and it was uncontrolled. Because that's the sense that I get, is that something erupted, it was uncontrolled, and the sense of justice or the sense of what you were able to do you really felt like, I, I can't do much about this. There's not much that I can actually do. And in, in some instances, perhaps that's right. But there, well, I want to just put your... When we think about two blindfolded people, one of them, I think, is seeking justice in a... In a you know, when we think about test studies and we think about blind studies where you don't know if you're getting, you know, the the actual thing or if you're getting a, a you know just like a gummy bear right let's say that you're going to take something and you're in a trial a clinical trial and it's a blind trial you don't know whether you have it or not and it's sort of talking about especially with these two together it's kind of talking about faith to me the faith that things are going to work out the faith that things will come to a conclusion and a form of justice, okay, that you may have, yeah, some of you very much are hawk energy people, you've got a hawk, or an eagle here, you've got a hawk on the back here, this lady has hawk wings, and of course we have birds here, so I think birds are really very um, significant for you, if you're seeing a lot of them, take note of it, okay, um, but the other thing that I notice about this lady is that she has sort of a serene look on her face. She doesn't necessarily look bothered or look like she's looking around. She's kind of pleasantly sitting down. So perhaps this tower hap had to happen, right, in order for you to realize that you were kind of bound where you were. Because it shows us opening up into the masculine. And this card always makes me giggle a little bit because he has his hoofs. And he's kind of like, come, hello and welcome. You know, he's the, he's the divine masculine, the ruling father. And for some of you, I think this has to do with fathers or the absence of fathers because it's paired with the eight of pentacles and he's banging out his pentacles. And for some of you, I feel like there was an absence of a masculine figure or someone who would have taken that masculine role and showed you work ethic or some other thing that you feel like you never got that um, modeled for you that you were kind of on your own but there's something very deep about this card when I pick it up I really feel like you feel there's something lost here this card is representing some sort of loss and in here I feel like when we have the eight we're serenely this lady doesn't really notice that she's bound by these swords and that there's a way out and there you know that there's there's anything else but then when this happens right I mean there's lightning that hits the tree it's very quick and it erupts very fast but then I think there's a sense of what part of me is missing because there's something very, um, when I look at this card, I really get a sense of someone who enjoys what they do, they're, they're involved, and it, it looks sort of peaceful. He's, he's here, he's banging it out of his pentacles, he's doing his day-to-day -day work, and there's something of a peacefulness about it, and I feel like you want this to be more connected. Okay? Whether this represents a father figure for you, or someone that showed you what it is to be in love with what you're doing or to be at peace with it okay because there is something very deep that's coming up with this reading you um you have a card i'm going to hop over and show you this other card before we get to this one below it 
you have a card here next to that we have the wheel of fortune which is the great wheel okay and i think when i look at this card i'm looking at all these different feathers there's all different types of feathers once again back to birds but it seems like when i think about all those different birds i think oh am i this type of bird oh am i that type of bird oh am i this type of bird like we've tried out a lot of different hats and here we have the hermit where the hermit if we look at this picture his this is the back of the hermit for this card and he's his robe is tattered he's gone through a, enough stuff right he's gone through quite a few things and his he's there he has he has the moon goddess i don't know if you can see her that's her reflection she's guiding him and he also has his lamp which is the star right but he has this cosmic egg and the cosmic egg is the the secrets of the universe it's it's here in a material form and it has the snake around it he has a snake around his staff that kind of meets up with this snake okay which sounds kind of silly but it's true so when they meet he's he's opening up the the secrets and sometimes when we don't go seeking for secrets we will end up in a situation that will kind of crack open something much deeper for us okay this is an anima this is your masculine anima and for some reason we're not completely connected with it right now because below that i have the high priestess and she's not facing us she's facing out to the sky sort of like this lady is facing out to the sky okay so there's there's an invitation here but we don't see her face so i feel like in order to completely be in our day-to-day -day and be completely the the phrase i keep getting from spirit is completely embodied in our day-to-day -day world whatever that may be okay it doesn't mean that you you know you work at a particular job it means how we take on our day-to-day -day chores our day-to-day -day life and it has something to do with how self-mastery but uh, how we run our world because we each have our own emperor right that we need to welcome in the masculine side of ourselves about how we we are going to take charge how we are going to pursue our goals how we are going to interact and gain those things that we want and the hermit here okay has gone on his own journey and this is saying if you have led a life where it didn't involve something deeper and more spiritual that okay that opportunity is coming to you okay because here here we have it being offered up although it's not open yet right it's just starting to open that sense of intimate knowledge with self because more so the hermit goes on their journey to be alone with their thoughts to understand those things about themselves but also to let people know that they'll have to make a journey to them to come see them okay so i feel like you shut yourself off for for knowledge of yourself for knowledge of those spiritual truths because you have the you have the egg here and you have the two hounds and the crab that the moon has offered you so there's a deeper knowledge that you're coming close to and it has to do because underneath that we have a hooded figure with the five of cups the two of cups are in the foreground and the and a rose grows behind him okay so whatever loss this was we're mourning those three right now and spirit is saying when we look at these cups right here we have him looking at the cups that are down but here we have we're really looking at the back and then these two here with the hermit okay so whatever whatever happened here we're now realizing what's left and how we can resolve that 
and how our own divine masculine, okay, can come into play. Because there's something here that we're not at peace with. And it's not, it's not a retiring energy, okay? Yeah. And a lot of your reading, we have two people that are blindfolded. We have two people that aren't facing, well, no, three people that aren't facing us. So these are things, these are deep parts of self that are coming to bubble up to the surface. And I think when they do, we're going to open up and figure out what parts of ourselves, what part of this, this is an opportunity of sorts to get a deeper knowledge of our own inner working. Okay? And when we try it on all these different hats, we're going to figure out which one we truly feel comfortable in, okay, with the Eight of Pentacles on a very practical day-to-day -day life. But also, I asked for um, cards that are in your atmosphere right now. You have the Ace of Wands, and you have Temperance. So Temperance is moving that energy back and forth. That energy that possibly is left in the Two of Cups back here. Because we have two cups there, don't we? So there's some sort of balancing of what we deemed was... We may have made, in the past, we may have made quick judgments about things or cut people off that we wanted to actually be close to. Or however we acted in our masculine way at the point where we thought this was the best decision and that's what I'm going with. I think that spirit is saying, play with that energy. Let that go back and forth because there's a very creative solution. And there's also other creative things that could come to light because I want to draw this in. When we have an ace, that's the, begin that's the very, very beginning of something creative. And I asked for another clarifying card, which is the Three of Wands, which we see him facing the sun with a yin-yang. He has this one. Some of you, I really believe, with this pentacles, it's not that you haven't been successful, okay? I think this person, even though that you know they didn't realize that there was more that they could do, they they've accomplished things. I think some of you ac have accomplished quite a few things in this physical world because we have this and this wand right here, right here. But this one is lit. This one has the patterns that are illuminated on it. You can see it better on here. Okay, and he looks ready to go. This is a significator. Okay, that goes after the Five of Cups. This is this is the outcome if we look further on, because I kind of wanted to look further on to see where you're at. And even though he's in a desert, I don't think this bothers him. I mean, he's he's actually coming from a really green area. So you could go wherever you needed to go with that. The other thing that we're making peace with with the emperor is father-son roles. Some of you, I think that resonates a lot. Or daughter-father roles. However that masculine, a parent, okay, and you come together because here we have, I know I keep turning it, sorry. <laughs> here we have a little boy and he's, He's here watching him. I really feel for some of you, you missed out on seeing someone else work. Or you feel, or you've put someone else, the masculine in your life, on some sort of um, pedestal or, you know, admired so much what they did that you don't admire yourself in the same way. But this really talks about not only being you know, that you have these talents, that you did this. I think these are things, these are accomplishments. I think there's a third one that's coming into being now. And it comes from going off and meeting with yourself, right? Taking that journey. Most of your cards are not looking at us. Most of your cards are not facing us. And so this may be a time where you're not spending a lot of time with other people, where you're taking that time for yourself. And 
it's opening up a very, very deep knowledge of your spiritual self. Because the other thing about the hermit, if we look on this side, he has a blue tattered um, cloth that's closest to him that wraps around him. And that is that is the um, symbol for spiritual peace. And for you, I think that's what you are seeking more than any earthly thing, more than any other thing, is that that's your being, your soul, is that spiritual peace, that's the thing that's closest to you. And that's where you want to harmonize, okay? Does that make sense? <laughs> It's a beautiful reading. I want to get you. Mm -hmm. I want to get you one of these, one of the wisdom of the oracle, just to see. You have such a big reading. This is such a big. For some of you, I really feel like this thing that came out. You were like, "What in the heck? I don't understand why that's happening at all." But it really is breaking apart old pieces, old old limitations that you didn't need. And you're making peace with, okay, how your day-to-day -day life, what you actually bring into the 3D, okay, and how, how you're dealing with, because that's what the emperor would be doing in his own, in his way, right? And I'm thinking of an elk, even though I think this is an antelope, I'm thinking of an elk. So if any of you resonate with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We got a little mm, from Aku over there. No, that's super nice. Okay. Let me put this down. So you have fork in the road, which I think a lot of you are feeling that. Then you have blessed, which is number 22. What number is this one? Number 13. Yeah, and then number 26, happy, happy. Spirit is saying, keep this close to you, the happy, happy. Even if you are doing things, if, you, if you're off on your own mountain, okay, wherever you've decided to go, to be in this hermit space, that doesn't mean you have to not be, you, you know, that doesn't keep you from being joy, you know, feeling joy or feeling love. There's a lot of that available to you. Okay. All right, that's all I have for you. I hope you loved your reading. I love reading for you. Really beautiful, guys. Okay. Um, and one more message. In the future, I think there's little butterflies here. And little hands that are grabbing towards them so you might be attracted to one other pile but in the future I think that you're going to there's something of this see where this little boy is watching that person I think you're going to represent some of those things for people who are going who went through this the same feeling like maybe they didn't have someone to watch when they were younger I think you're going to provide that for them okay all right um thank you for being here thank you for letting me do your reading uh if you want to you can leave me a comment below if not i respect your privacy and if you're subscribed or if you've recently subscribed welcome and thank you if you'd like to subscribe you're more than welcome to and if you'd like to work with me there's information in the link tree below Whew, that's such a long all right love you bye-bye hi if you picked judgment then this is your reading. Um, I'm going to take a sip of bubbly water real quick. I'm going to just look at this card for a minute. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where did I put all my rocks? Right there. So we have the polar bear. And he looks, he looks quite fierce. One thing I think about with this card... is obviously with judgment and this is called transcend the transcendence so we're moving from um this is this is a large shift in energy 
And for some of you, the polar bear, for me, when you look, when you think about bears, there's brown bears, there's grizz, you know, grizzly bears, there's black bears, and then there's polar bears. And um, there's things that you, when you look up, like how to deal with running into any of them, you know, what you could do to be safe. And with polar bears, there's not much. You know, hopefully you have a capsule that is, they can't get into or something. They're, they're pretty, um, they're pretty fierce. And then the thing that comes up with this card is that I don't know if he has a place to stop because it all looks like water. So I don't know if he has an ice cap to just sit down on for a while. And you may have felt that way, like there's no, there's nothing, there's no place for me to pause for a moment and just relax. But you have a lot of good cards. I'm just going to say that right now. Whatever you've been going through on a much, this, the, your reading is very much, here's what's going on on a bigger level, and then here's what's going on on a day-to-day. And your day-to-day by the end is starting to match up with your bigger. Okay? If that makes sense. But here's judgment. And we have a sun coming through on a very, it looks like that was a huge storm off in the distance. Underneath judgment, we have Ace of Swords. This really, you know, do, do any of you live near islands? Or, and I'm not talking about warm islands, like cold islands? Just a, just a question. Because this person has their solar plexus lit, and it looks like a shell. And this being the Ace of Swords, there's some sort of innate, like, light on, right? All of a sudden, the light's on, and it's clarified. Underneath, to clarify that, we have Three of Wands. Which, to me, this is the third eye. Yeah. With the green eye, I think about what clarified, like what clear resolution did we get that actually opened up something for us? And I think about creativity in that way of having your third eye lit and it kind of leads the creative, like push forwards, okay? Whereas something all of a sudden became very nice and clear and that third eye lit up and said, right there. But I don't think that whatever came before this was easy with the judgment card. And transcendence on this is saying that there's things that we transcended with judgment, it's past, present, and future. So there's things from our past that have, we've transcended them and we've moved into our future where you, it is bountiful, okay? You have the Ace of Swords, which is clarity of thought. It's a beginning of new thought with the three, okay? The Three of Wands, which is something is being birthed, right? That's a, that's a foundation of creativity. Next, we have the Nine of Wands. If you look at this card in this card, there's light coming through here and there's light that's coming through there. It's coming through those, those barriers or the, um, the things that kept us protected. And it's saying, the darkness before dawn. So that's, I mean, that is the saying that it's always darkest before dawn. So if you're in this place right now where you feel like I'm treading water and I'm looking for land, something very beautiful is coming to, into birth, okay? You have Page of Wands, which means, and this looks like, boy, what an ornate, beautiful Page of Wands. Lots and lots of color here. 
lots of lots of blossoms whatever is coming your way very very beautiful you have a lot of energy being released your your reading kind of speaks of i was here i was treading water i'm waiting i'm waiting for this thing and then all of a sudden like pow everything starts okay you have the wheel of fortune underneath that okay and she's she's basically it, it kind of, I kind of think about this. I'm going to just close that off. <laughs> I kind of think about this Wheel of Fortune as she's the head of a ship because there's a wheel, right? Where we used to have those beautiful um, women, like the mass of boats that would lead the boat. So for some of you, this is a divergence from what you were doing, from what you were experiencing before. Because you also, the next thing, after the Nine of Wands, after the darkest, you know, dark before the dawn, we have the Ace of Cups. With this deck, you don't get a, I mean, I, I often don't um, grab these other cards. This is sort of beautiful. You got a, an Ace of Cups, which looks like the only, like, thing that's a little bit weird is these long fingers that are grabbing for the ace of cups but if we think about it this is we poured ourselves that cup right because ace of cups is self-love underneath it we have the world so for a lot of you with this i really speaks of a voyage or travel are you thinking of going somewhere or are you going to be offered to go somewhere because we do have the page of wands that could be an adventure And below that, we have the Ten of Cups. And this Ten of Cups, because it is the skeleton couple, actually, it's a skeleton man with a skeleton baby, I think. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of Spain because it looks sort of like he's riding this. It, it's a horse, but it kind of reminds me of Spain because it makes me think of like red like a bull. But this is some sort of passion project that opens up or passionate love because you I'm just going to show you you have the ace of cups you have the clarity of the ace of swords in the atmosphere you have the ace of wands lots and lots of energy bursting forth and if you didn't think that was enough you have the ace of discs so you have new start new start new start new start new start on every level of your life, what in the world were you treading through out here that brought all of this in? My goodness. Okay. <laughs> this must have been quite, quite an enormous transcendence for you. And then the universe was like, hey, hold on a second. It's going to be good. And I think it all starts from Ace of Cups. Okay. And we're guaranteed that by coming through. Well, this is our starting card, right? This is with the judgment. We have the clarity. And then we have our third eye being lit. I really feel like, especially with this deck, this is the third eye. And we're moving into creative mode, where we're starting to think creatively about our next move. Then, with Nine of Wands, more movement, page, right? Page of Wands. And look at all the flowers. This is such a beautiful, I really feel like this is an offer of some sort, okay? And that turns the tables because the Wheel of Fortune is here. And some of you, this might be an actual voyage, because we do have we do have things that are talking about voyages. The other thing that I want to bring up, these two other things, the, the other the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles, okay, which here we have that's really beautiful. And then the Ace of Wands. Once you get going on this journey, there's going to be so much available as far as... These are in the atmosphere right now. But once you have that clarity, you can, you can 
keep multiplying this, okay? It's going to start with your own passion and love, but you can multiply this, especially because right underneath that you have the world, which means to me that there's not a lot of limits with this. For some of you, this might actually speak about birthing something, like actual birth. The other thing I want to bring up is you have the five of swords. And I want to say that this is a lady that looks sort of like the owls that she has around her, and she has a baby with her. This is in the atmosphere. If we look at her eyes, can you see her eyes? They look almost like the owl's eyes. And I think this is spirit holding, she has a hand that she's holding. This is spirit saying you have that ability. Especially with your third eye being lit. You can see forward without any help. Is there an emblem there? Yeah, I'm not really sure what that is. Anyway. It may be with the five of swords. Normally we see this as a difficulty, but I think you have all of these spirit guides around you. Okay, if owls mean something to you, look that up. But if this baby is a new thought or a new idea, because you have so much that can be birthed, okay? You have so much that you can bring into this idea. It's limitless, okay? And, oops, with the world and the Ten of Cups, it's going to bring you, we have the Ace and the Ten, okay? We have the beginning. It's a full circle. This thing is going to be all-encompassing. Wow, guys. Um, I'm going to grab you just a few clarifiers on Ace of Swords and Three of Wands because I just want to look at that. No, that one, that one. Yeah. Yeah, the energy is really, really shifting right now. And if you don't feel anything, it's because it's just being put into place. But it's, with the chariot, look, it's the same colors. You have a lot of energy all of a sudden just opening up. That's really what I feel most about your reading, is that whatever whatever transcendence we went through we wiped away a whole bunch of things that we no longer needed okay we came to a very clear understanding and then our third eye lit right and then that offer comes in and it might feel this card might feel very very lonely because we're not we can feel it happening, right? We can feel that energy coming up, but it's not there yet. But when it gets there, I, I keep thinking about when you're like, you know, when you're waiting for something, when you're waiting for a really good meal, or if you're waiting for a drink because you're so thirsty, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is exactly it's so satisfying. Anything else that you can tell me? Because this looks huge, guys. You'll have to, if you can, let me know in the comments below. Yeah. For some of you, I'm just going to say this. It's going to bring people in, and it might bring in someone. We see two, two birds over here. And it might be that you had to choose between two different paths because there's one bird flying on their own. Okay? So when this offer comes in, it might bring more than one offer. And you're going to make a choice about that that sits well with you. Yeah. On the back, we have the lovers. Yeah. For some of you, this is going to be a choice when you get this offer. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to grab you one more oracle card. <laughs> Ooh, you guys have to let me know if you can. And if you are um, subscribed to the channel, thank you for being here. If you'd like to subscribe, you're more than welcome to. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, one more, please. One more. I feel it. One more. And if you just subscribe, thanks for being here. And if you'd like to work with me, you can do so below on the link tree. I'm doing this because I think my phone's running out of juice. 
So I want to show you these really quick. Mm -hmm. The first one we got out, Innocence. And I think that when we get all these aces, we're definitely going to feel that way. Divine timing. You are in line. You are in line with divine timing. And gratitude. Oh my God, beautiful guys. Oh, all right. I'm I'm super excited about your pile. Super excited. Um, I will talk with you soon. This was so fabulous. And mwah, much love.